Welcome into Caldwell County today. I'm Eric Stafford and I'm sitting once again here in the Caldwell Arts Council and we are here for the latest show which uh, is, oddly enough is called Old Things. So it's Old Things and I have with me uh, the, the artists that are on exhibit here and that is Steve West and Andrew Atkins. Is Atkins? At Ken. At Ken. And uh, we are here to talk about some of their old things. So, uh, guys, welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. It's, Happy to be here. And it's beautiful stuff. I mean, I, I'm, I like old things. <laughs> and it's, uh, I see a lot of barns, but it's, I mean, it is so, some of them are incredibly photorealistic. Some of them are photos, mm-hmm. Stephen, or Steve, and uh, just beautiful beautiful stuff uh, uh tell me uh, uh andrew uh, is is this your normal subject matter that you usually do it's one of the subjects i pursue i, I have three areas that i tend to focus in on the barn series i just finished in particular for this exhibit and the other two series that i uh, focus on are trees and the landscape that surrounds us here in Caldwell county and a small series of abstracts dealing with uh, some basic building blocks of visual art, like you know, line, shape, form, and color, essentially, and just kind of mixing it together and putting it together and see what comes out of it. Now, you, uh, uh, what type of paint do you use? What medium do you use? Strictly acrylic on canvas right now. Uh, I'm thinking about adding some other elements that I used to play around with to make a multifaceted image, but at this point, I'm gonna stick with paint. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got interested in barns and, and old things. Well, uh, I, it's kind of a throwback to when I was a kid growing up. Uh, I just really thought, you know, looking at it back now, uh, nostalgically speaking, yeah. I look back at these things that, that I grew up with and I find them really cool because I grew up with that. Those are things that I remember. And, uh, and so I like that, uh, being, having been an art teacher yes. and worked in art and all its various forms, besides photography, by the way, uh, I really enjoy the, the, the textures, the textures, the colors, uh, line, shape, form, just like uh, Andrew says, you know, the, those are the kind of things that grab artists, I think, more than anything else, if it's interesting. Yeah. And, I can, you know, I like to take, uh, let's say, an ordinary object, an ordinary, let's say, uh, it could be a barn, uh, and I work it through manipulation, through uh, post-processing, we call it, through uh, Photoshop, and then I use something called uh, Topaz Studio 2 now, which is a really good uh, plug-in that goes with, in conjunction with Photoshop. It can also be independent, but it has amazing filters, and uh, I just feel like I'm, I'm creating paintings. They, when I'm done, they look well, sort of like paintings in some cases. So uh, I'm very excited about the visual effects. It just, it just, it brings me pleasure to be able to create things like that. And, and beautiful things. Both of you have great artwork that's here. Now, uh, Andrew, when, when you start up, do you see something and it just makes you want to paint it, or how does that work? It works in in many ways, and I can't put my thumb on any one specific thing. It's it's just a compilation of various things that sort of strike your sensibilities when you see something. The old buildings, to me, represent uh, part of our our past as an agrarian society. That's how this country was actually built and run for many, many decades, actually several centuries before the Industrial Age uh, kicked in and the... uh, mid 19th century and gradually the farms and the farming family was slowly but surely being uh, pushed off the map so to speak disappearing from our landscape and our whole being was built around the hard working farmer of all genres of all races of all creeds from large farmsteads and cattle ranches to your poor dirt farmers and your sharecroppers um, you know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears was invested in all this endeavor, and I, it hurts me and pains me to see that has disappeared. It's the work ethic, I think, too, that has largely been eroded over time. 
So these barns, in essence for me, are the icons of the landscape that's left over from the past. And they've got to document them in, in beautiful paintings because these are beautiful ruins. And as ruins go, as you know, in Europe and other parts of the world, ruins is a big draw. People identify with that past. And the history is just not something that Americans, by and large, pay attention to. And the history goes away. And I can't, I can't have that happen in my artistic vision, in my world. <laughs> History's got to be alive and well. It's got to go on. It's part of us. Yeah. And, and beautiful paintings they are. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I, I'm looking at brush strokes. I'm a little bit of an artist myself, and I was telling these fellas, I look at stuff and I'm like, man, I would have never thought to do that. Hmm. Painting really is, is nothing really original about it, uh, unless it's the artists themselves thinking of something original. You're always borrowing from something that's already been done. Now the subject matter, that's age old subject matter. Artists have been painting barns and old structures for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. Acrylic is a new medium, still fairly fresh in the world of art and creating paintings. It used to be oil and so on and so forth. Uh, the thing about acrylic is that it, it dries fast. You have to work yeah, quickly. That's, that's what I like about it. Oh, that's what I, like. I, I, like, I, like, I like being spontaneous and intuitive because it keeps the image fresh. And you don't have to work it so much and get frustrated with the outcome. I mean, it is what it is, and it's going to treat it as it is. The thing is, is that it is a struggle. Um, and I learn from each piece. If you don't learn, there's no point in doing it, in my, in my view, really. That's true. Uh, now Steve is a as an art instructor, <laughs> yeah. so you you you've done this yourself as far as painting and all that you were saying yes, that you had I, done all I that as well. Many different media, yeah, drawing, painting, sculpture, ceramics, fibers, calligraphy, you know, just yeah. just you name it. I probably have done it. <laughs> screen printing. Uh, I even had a little screen printing operation uh, when I was teaching years ago. Uh, different clubs they needed yeah. something screen printed did a logo for the club and that I would do that and uh, uh, so you know it's just it's fun but I think I, I draw from all of these different areas of art in creating what I make you know yeah. uh, there are many people out there that can take a straight photograph and that's fine if that's if that's what they want to do I want to make my photographs pop and so I, I use whatever means possible <laughs> to make them really pop and make the viewer want to look at it closely. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, so that's my, that's my bag, so to speak. So. <laughs> now, uh, for, for folks at home and for kids especially at home, we were chit-chatting before we started, and we were talking about cartooning, and both of you guys started copying cartoons oh, in, sure. in comic books yeah, and yes. in, in the paper. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up with comic books. That's about the only thing that us military kids had to read, especially <laughs> when we were stationed overseas, you know. And that was that was a very popular thing. So, of course, it was Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, and then all the Mickey Mouse things. Mm -hmm. But eventually, my taste started evolving into something a little more complicated, like John Buscema's Conan the Barbarian and Red Sonja and Thor and all that stuff. So I made a little money on the side, you know, to, to get certain things to imbibe <laughs> in. But, okay. uh, but it, it teaches you about line, and it, and it teaches you about sheer control and focus with the line. A lot of my paintings, you'll see line in it. Yeah. Uh, I can't divorce myself from that element in the paintings. Even though I use a brush, it still creates that line. I teach my students in drawing one, even though we do pointillism or markers, keep in mind it's always about the line. And Keith Herring is a great example who uh, emphasized the line in, in his work in the 1980s. Keith Herring started out as a graffiti artist, mm -hmm. and his work became very popular because he emphasized the movement of the line, the animation of the figures, and the activity that's going on in each image that he created. Mm -hmm. Quite quickly, as a matter of fact, and not long enough, <laughs> because he, long he long passed long away. Long yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 too soon. Yeah, right. But but it was interesting to me that you know you kids sitting at home, you can start tracing stuff, start drawing stuff. If you if you're interested in drawing, I mean this is this is where it will head to. Is, is 
great paintings and great photography, beautiful stuff. Yeah, always copy. I mean, you're going to learn by copying. You're going to see what the artist in the past has done or, or present artists are doing. And when you recreate that line, you understand what that line does. You understand what form it creates eventually. And then, of course, you know, you paint by number type thing. You understand the relationship between line and color because you can create that that marriage, I like to use that word because that's exactly what it is. It's just conjoining the two disciplines together, painting and, and drawing. Right. So I teach both classes with high school students mm -hmm. to try to get to understand that concept. Once they latch onto it, understand it to a certain degree, mm -hmm. they're doing some really gangbuster uh, images at that young age. I'm just like thrilled. Hey, you caught on us. I saw the light bulb go on. My job's <laughs> done for the day. Goodbye. <laughs> and, and it's great to inspire other people to do that and to, yeah. to have that creativity. But yeah. you, you guys have a beautiful show going on here. It's old things. It runs for the next month or so. And so we'll be glad for you guys to come. you got to come up here and see what they've done because they've got some beautiful artwork here. Yeah. And, and you'll probably appreciate some of the old things they appreciate as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's all about design for me. <laughs> all about design. It, it all, it all it, goes back to design. It, it, it boils down to uh, not cluttering your image. Don't have a cluttered image. Keep it simple. Yeah. Okay, these are tips for you guys out there. Okay? <laughs> Keep it simple. Don't clutter your image with too many things or, or what happens is you lose focus, all right? It's good to have leading lines. Yeah. Have lines lead into That's the right. picture. Uh, it's good to... Uh, think about the what we call the rule of thirds, where you divide the image into, you have basically nine squares in a, in a picture, make a grid with like nine squares across, and then have your main focus at one of the intersections of those oh, okay, yeah. things, and you get, you'll be, it'll be a more pleasing composition. Uh, what else? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting free art moving, tips. <laughs> yeah, moving yeah. close, moving close. Yeah. If, you, if you're like doing, uh, for instance, if you're doing pictures of, let's say, gardens and flowers and all that, if you step back, too cluttered, move in close, get that flower, move in close to, there's a bee sitting on the flower, get that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just so much more interesting. I think in photography that would be very true because yeah. that's the essence of the, of the subject. Mm -hmm. what's, what's that subject all about? Sure. I mean, it, everybody can, anybody can take a photograph of a flower. And flowers, I love flowers. Sure. But it's the activity of the bee doing something to the, yeah. to the flower, pollination. Exactly. And that's all comes into play. But you mentioned something about the grid structure of, a, of an image and how you begin the uh, uh, early beginnings of an image, photography, painting, drawing, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to focus in on detail. Mm -hmm. Because detail, for me, holds the interest of the viewer as opposed to other elements within the work. Mm -hmm. And I think, Eric, you mentioned the border. That's a detail. Yeah, you mentioned the rock work. That's detail. Mm -hmm. Those are criti critical components to make an image successful. I cannot stand minimalism. That was a horrible, <laughs> horrible genre of work. But it served <laughs> a purpose. And I look at it fairly often and say, that's not me. I'm not going to go there. But I understand what they're saying, really, is focus on one thing at a time and let that one thing mm -hmm. at a time rule the picture plane. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, as opposed to what you said a while ago, I gotta throw it all in there because <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, got, it's there and I gotta do this. You know? it's, I guess it's the nature, nature of the artist too. It's your yeah. personality too. Yeah, it's just, uh, I think photography lends itself to, to focusing on, on specific things Yeah. Uh, yeah. versus what you do, which is you wanna pick up all the textures of the grass, Oh yeah, you do. Vines, yeah. trees, yes, you do. Each things, things on the trees. I mean, yeah. so you know, again, yeah. it depends on what you're trying to do. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. But you know, it, let's have an open mind, folks. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's it, what's good for John is great That's for true. it's not great for somebody else. Yeah. The old saying, "Beauty is, is in the eye of the beholder." It's exactly. So true too. You know, exactly. So. I, I do remember an artist that told me one time. He said, "You got to know when to quit." <laughs> Yes, you do, because you tend to, to dangerously come close to overworking them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then it destroys it, and then you go, oh, man. Yes. And yes. You, just, you just get a big wide brush, and you mark yes. it right out. Yeah. And I tell my students that, don't get frustrated with a little mark that you don't like, 
and it ruins your image. So you say, get the wide brush, some black paint, gray paint, pss, slap it on there. Paint's paint. You can start over. That's true. That's it. That's true. The idea is gold is going to be in your heart and your head. And if you want to see some great art, come up here to College Avenue to the Caldwell Arts Council and, and check out some of the great old things that are up here. You guys through have done through November twenty sixth. Through so. November twenty sixth. So so after Thanksgiving. So you gotta get up here before Thanksgiving. <laughs> the thing about marketing um, visual art in this in this particular instance is that it's just not so much as us guys selling something. Uh, I look at it as my clientele investing not only in the piece itself, which somehow or another it has touched you in some way. You connected with me. You're investing in me. Mm -hmm. You're investing in my career, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I hate to call my artistic endeavors a career, being as it is. It's just something that is absolutely fascinating to do because each painting is so vastly different from the previous one. Mm -hmm. You don't know where it's going to lead. And I like that mystery. There's a huge mystery there. Because if I knew everything all about it, like a prodigy probably would, what is the point? I'm going to drive a truck and make just as much money or better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. These are unique. It's like diamonds in the mine. Each piece of creative uh, energy, photography, and, and uh, uh, in this case, in my case, be paintings. Um, Steve has his vision. I have my vision, and there's no two alike. Exactly. These paintings are one of a kind. I don't do giclés, I don't do copies, because I like to keep it absolutely unique. One. Mm -hmm. One. And it just it does well for me, actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to get inspired, come up here and see this show. It is, it is inspiring, and it's just... It, I mean, I'm looking at a bar at a barn right now, the painting that, that Andrew did, and I'm looking at it, and there's so many colors in that one barn. And you think how many colors could possibly be in that old wood, but I can see them, and it looks it looks almost as photorealistic as what Steve does. Right. So it's right. crazy. Mm -hmm. Right. You could probably construe our work as impressionism. Yeah. Because we chose... Mm -hmm. Uh, through various means to explore the full color spectrum as the Impressionists did. What the Impressionists actually did was explode the color spectrum. They allowed each color to speak for itself as opposed to traditional work where much of the color, even though it was well done, was more traditionally used, whereas Impressionism, they broke that mold. Mm -hmm. And this occurred right around 1870. Now there's a reason for it, too. It's historical, as a matter of fact. This is my theory, is that uh, the Sahara Desert has giant sandstorms, and being south of Europe, that sand goes aloft and covers over Europe, and it's silica, it's glass. It makes light separate itself, almost like a prism, and that's basically what it is. So you have these auras all around these objects, and these artists spotted it. You had a lot of uh, European artists go to North Africa to paint because of the clarity, because of the, the beautiful sunlight and the sand and the dust and what mm -hmm. it does to to the atmosphere. You know, it's atmospheric. Mm -hmm. It's very eth okay. ethereal. And you gotta have that. I, I just like it. It kind of <laughs> digs down in your gut. Like, man, they got it. And it's still alive and well today. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I do it. Yeah. And our skies today, in 2021 here in October, our sunrises and sunsets are affected by almost the same phenomenon. But we're talking about dust particles and smoke particles from all the fires out west. Yeah. And now we have multiple volcanic eruptions on the grand scale putting more debris in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see more things happening in the atmosphere. And that all affects color and light all around, every day, all day mm -hmm. long. You, mm -hmm. cannot, you cannot divorce yourself from that. Man, it's like, well, Mother Nature's given me all this stuff. Mm -hmm. why, not, why not use it? Yeah. So that's what I did. That's how I actually was good too. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's there. It's there. It's there, man. You got to capitalize on that. It's there. Well, thank you guys so much for taking right. the time cool. to talk thank to you. us and and come out and see the show because it's great right. stuff and it'll inspire you and get you drawing uh, or painting or photography. It'll get your 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 gut going. There's something about going to a gallery and seeing fresh works and seeing new stuff and you just really it makes your creativity kind of uh, come to the surface. It makes you want to get out there and do something. Yeah, when I go to a gallery, I'm humbled 
the, yeah. the amount of talent <laughs> around this yeah. area and around the world or region, yeah. it'll, it'll blow your socks off. It's just, I'm very, very humbled, very humbled. It, it's, it's beautiful stuff out there. Gorgeous stuff in here, so you got to come see it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. All right. See you later. I got dusty bare feet stained in 